That was a statement that was made back in 1988, 1989. We're going to show you a video in just a couple of minutes of what's happened today. That was never developed as a drug. It was put on the market as a nutrient so that everyone would have access to it. In 1999, Dr. McDaniel lectured to the staff of the Surgeon General on the pediatric value of the glyconutrient you're going to hear about tonight. He also presented phytochemical micronutrition to the Comprehensive Cancer 2000 conference sponsored by the National, Ca National Cancer Institute. He also addressed the United Nations Office on Food and Agriculture in Rome, Italy on how micronutrition can improve world health at an unparalleled low cost. And in 2001, he presented to the White House on bioterrorism on how glyconutritionals provides an economical and effective means to support general body defense mechanisms and block bioterrorism and infectious agents. And in case you're wondering, he was the only doctor in the United States that got to present on a, in a nutritional category against the bioterrorism that they feared after 9-11. In 2002, he presented at the Ninth World Congress on Clinical Nutrition on the benefits seen in terminal AIDS patients. In 2002, he presented to the Tribal Council of the Dakota Sioux on the restoration of children with fetal alcohol syndrome, diabetes, and cancer. He's done additional presentations on hepatitis C, behavioral problems, and vascular development lesions in children. And in 2002, Dr. McDaniel became the medical director for the organization that you, many of you know of as Manor Relief where he's working to educate others on the significance of glyconutrients in creating and restoring and maintaining health. If you just roll those next video. It also threats it was uh, a real surprise to me. It was something out of the blue. I had always thought of Tourette as a hereditary thing and hadn't seen it um, in my family before. And so, although it was a relief to have a diagnosis to know exactly why he was experiencing some of the things he was, um, it was also scary because I didn't know a lot about it. Taylor had uh, his vocal tics were sniffing, um, clearing his throat, and his uh, simple tics were rubbing his eyes until the skin would break down inside of his face, or licking his lips until his lips would all break out into sores. I felt stressed as a parent because there were things that Taylor would do, uh, like the constant sniffing, um, that people would look at you funny and you knew they were thinking, you know, if you were a good parent, you tell your child to stop that. When I saw the dramatic difference of having him on these nutrients from before when he was on nothing, I was amazed because it was completely black and white. And then he went to not no tips. The sniffing stopped, the, the eye blinking stopped, the licking of his mouth stopped, so his skin healed up so quickly not only from lack of, of licking, but the product itself set up the process of the skin healing. When I took it, it's like you couldn't see that it, it didn't ever happen to me, that it was ever there. Like, I don't even do it anymore. Now, <coughs> since the tick stopped, I have, I'd say, seven friends. I have a more fun life. Nobody. Like, calling me names. I took Ryan to the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Center here in Edmonton. And uh, the psychiatrist diagnosed him with the most severe form of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Also, oppositional defiant disorder. Also, borderline obsessive compulsive disorder. At the time, he was convinced he was Batman. <laughs> And they also diagnosed him with childhood depression, which in 97% of children apparently manifests as aggression. And that was definitely what was going on for him. So here we had all these diagnoses. Uh, you know, they put in this uh, 
timeout room in the school for him, and he visited it sometimes 30 times a day. And uh, it was a horrible life. It was horrible for him. It was horrible for me. It was horrible for the community, for the school. Uh, I couldn't let him go outside by himself without knowing, you know, what was going to happen next or who was going to come knocking on my door. But when it started working with the glyconutritionals, I mean, you sort of held your breath at first thinking, could this really be working? And then, you know, a couple more weeks went by and there weren't any more incidences and he was happy and he was treating me well and treating the rest of his family well and pretty soon people were coming up to me and saying, what's going on with Ryan? Why is he so normal? That was the word that people were using. <laughs> and it was, I went through quite an identity crisis at the time because I had been prepared for the medication to work and it didn't. So I really had lost hope. I didn't think anything would work. And this did. It really did. So very, very thin and unhealthy. And um, the, the doctors had, after all of their testing, had um, figured that he probably had celiac disease. Um, and really there's not a, nothing you can do for that except limit your diet to a very, very limited diet. And he really wasn't getting any better. He wasn't gaining weight. His ribs showed every little bone in his body showed in his arms were really stick arms and stick legs. And um, he looked like a little baby that you would see from Ethiopia. He looked very, very malnourished. He was pretty much failing to thrive. There was, uh, sorry. And we were introduced to the glyconutritional um, products. And um, right away, you know, we started them on. And he had diarrhea with those, just like anything else. But it, it lessened and lessened until the point where he actually had no diarrhea at all and was, we started introducing foods and he was tolerating more and more foods. And um, we would keep letting him try things and he was doing, he would, was getting more better and better and better. And um, now he's growing, he's back on the weight curve, which before he had fallen completely off of. Since we've put Calvin on the glyconutrients, he he can be like any other kid. He's a perfectly normal kid. Mm -hmm.